Hi everybody, DJ Yokely with you, along with a very special guest. It is the Seabrink Coaches Corner, brought to you by Bear Brothers. I'm here with Matt Seidel. Coach, this is episode two. Welcome back. Even though it's virtual, the last time we talked, it was in person. Uh, we've had a couple changes over the OHSAA in the last couple months. Uh, a couple schedule changes, all of this stuff. But here we sit, as we talked about just prior to coming on, it feels like Christmas Eve, does it not? It really does, DJ. It's great to be back with you again. It's hard to believe this is episode two already. Uh, it feels like just yesterday I was coming down there to Palestine and hanging out with you. Um, you know, excited to be back, excited to finally get a chance to get rolling. You know, these kids deserve this opportunity. And, you know, with all the weird stuff that's going on, it's nice to just have a little bit of normal back for them. Last time we talked, there was so much kind of up in the air. We didn't know if there was going to be a season. We were prepping for one naturally, but there has been just like and this, a roller coaster of emotion for not only for your kids, but for your coaching staff, your your staff's family. Of course, you're a big part of that. And and, and when, when we talked, we you said, we're going to prepare like there's a season no matter what. You're preparing for the Latonia Bears for about seven, eight months, and then all of a sudden it gets flipped. And you've got a completely different team in the McDonald Blue Devils. How did right. you adjust to that? You know, you said it, DJ. It's it's a completely different team. You know, when you think of the Letonia Bears and Coach Julio, you think of the power run game and, you know, downhill with Marco Ferry, you know, just running over your kids all game long. And with McDonald, you know, they're a little bit different of a beast. They used to be that traditional wing tee team. And, uh, you know, with a, a fantastic athlete like Dominic Shadow that they've got at the quarterback position, um, you know, they've gone to a little more of a zone read kind of a look. Um, so it, it's been an interesting adjustment. We were lucky enough to know, you know, that we were going to have to play McDonald anyway. So we've talked about that game and we've talked about those kids and, you know, talked about what we would do against them while we were in camp and we were getting ready for the season as we just kind of looked through at all the teams that are on our uh, schedule this year. Um, and it just happens to be that they got moved up this year. So, you know, we told the kids, you know, we're just going to prepare like we're going to have a season and we don't know who it's going to be, but we're going to take that. We'll take any comers, you know, anybody that wants to come and play the Trojans, we'll be happy to see them on the field. And, and, and that's the, I guess the attitude you have to have at this point, right? I mean, there's, there's people dealing with a lot of stuff and, and you're just happy to play. You're just happy to be out there <laughs> and to give these guys a, a chance to, to represent the class of 2021. You know, and, and that's what it is. And and really, I think if you talk to any coach this year, it's going to be about, you know, the opportunity to get our seniors on the field one more time. Yep. I, I was heartbroken for the kids last year that, that were baseball players that didn't get an opportunity to have their senior season and didn't get to have their senior night. And I, I love this idea of a lot of schools now changing their senior nights and moving them up in the year just in case you don't get to because it is still up in the air. We really don't know what's going to happen. And I was mentioning to our guys at team dinner tonight, you know, don't take any opportunity that you've got to strap up the pads and get on the field for granted this year, because it might get taken away from you at any time. Yeah. What's crazy about all of this is, is the changes that we've seen both left, right, personally, professionally, um, you know, in sports and, and everything. And, and it seems like it's affected the kids the least. I think they've handled this better than the adults have. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I think I would definitely agree with that. You know, and I, I was thinking about that today as we were talking about, you know, some of the issues, especially in our league that we've been facing right now with we weren't sure that coaches' families were even going to be able to get into the games until I literally got the email at 11 o'clock last night. And I think you and I were joking that we were up both working on projects late in the <laughs> end of the what was that about 2 a.m. I think that yeah that was two it was 2 30 yeah we were we were up <laughs> on Facebook you know just doing our thing um so you know I I think there's a lot of truth to that I I think that uh you know again when we talked the first time you were you were preparing and you said something that really really didn't I mean it hit me because you were looking for this team to be special and for these seniors to come back five years from now to be inducted into the hall of fame for being the first team that it goes to the playoffs and then the ohsaa steps in and now everybody goes to the playoffs so how i i mean do, do you change that or how does that work you know i i think everybody in my league saw that interview DJ, because <laughs> i got text messages the very next morning 
that said, Hey, congratulations on your hall of fame team coach. Uh, you know, I don't know how that works out, but, but we told our kids, you know, after it happened, Hey, it's an opportunity. Nobody's ever going to be able to say again that the Sebring Trojans have not been to a playoff. Now I'm going to call it a tournament because when I think it, you know, every team in the state being able to get into it, that feels more like a tournament than a playoff to me. But, you know, it's an opportunity for our kids to get some exposure and do something that they've never been, ne never done here before. I guess one of my arguments for what the experience you're about to embark on is when a player gets a taste of something like a tournament or a postseason, uh, that sometimes is enough to want another taste the next year. Are you going to be treating it as such? You know, I, I think you're exactly right, DJ. I think that, you know, especially with such a heavy junior class this year, um, those kids are going to get to experience something that hasn't happened here before. And I, I'm thinking that, you know, in the off season this year, we're going to see even more buy into the program in the weight room. And we're going to see even more kids, you know, just getting really enthusiastic about playing football for the Sebring Trojans. Um, you know, we've, we've had a couple uh, new kids come out this year. I think I mentioned to you at one point, I've got like 13 guys on my roster that weren't on, weren't a part of my roster last year. So the new faces are coming. We just, we got to keep doing a good job as a coaching staff and get more of them encouraged to come out and stick with it. Talk to me about the McDonald Blue Devils. What do you see on tape and the limited film you've been able to, uh, to capture? I mean, there's not a whole, I, I don't want to say that there's not a whole lot of wrinkles in their, their, uh, their strategy, but they've had pretty much tried and true for, some time now. What, what are you seeing in the uh, the Blue Devils for tomorrow night? Well, the first thing always with the McDonald Blue Devils team is, at least as long as I can remember, <coughs> excuse me there, mm -hmm. um, Dan Williams is just a phenomenal football coach. Yes, he is. And he's been around the game for a long time. He's been the head coach over there for a long time. Their system is tried and true. Their kids live it. They breathe it. They've known it forever. Um, there's not a lot of change to it. But I give Dan a lot of credit because he's adapted to the players that he's got available. Uh, I mentioned before, Dominic Shadow is probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest player in our conference. And so for us, the game plan starts and ends with contain Dominic Shadow. Uh, I told the boys, he's a kid that you think of in, in terms of basketball where it's you're not going to stop him completely, but can you contain him enough to – make yourselves uh, have a shot at it at the end. And and that's what we preach to our kids is, hey, let's contain him. Let's be sound in our fundamentals and sound in our defensive philosophy and make sure that we stick to our rules and everybody just does their job. And we'll be right there at the end of the game with a chance to win it, hopefully. Very cool. So tell me about – your, I, I don't give away the, uh, the the cow here, but let's let's taste the milk and let's say, uh, what's the strategy to, to beat these guys? You know, I, I mentioned to you before when, when we were in episode one way back when, um, <laughs> I've got all these athletic kids this year. And so for us, it's about getting our playmakers the ball in space and letting them just go do what they do. Um, you know, I, I think we've put in a couple of nice wrinkles this year, um, some things that we didn't necessarily do last year. Um, but we've just got more overall team speed this year. The other thing that I think you're going to see out of us is our front seven this year is, is the best that I can remember in, in quite a few years now. Um, you know, we've got big, strong kids. We've got fast kids and we've got hard hitting kids that are in that middle in that front seven for us. Uh, and we're really looking forward to seeing what they can do once they get on the field. We had, we, we were lucky enough to be able to have a scrimmage on Friday night. Um, Lisbon came on down and we got to go a little bit with them. And uh, a couple of their kids said to me after the game, man, your kids hit this year. And uh, I, as a coach and as a guy that likes hitting, there's nothing I love hearing more from kids. Yeah. And, and as a former player who strapped it up for the Trojans, I mean, that's something that, that football players take seriously, you know, and you walk away a little bruised up. I mean, that's, that's a badge of honor. It definitely is. I, you know, we were talking about, we're not that far apart in age and I can remember, you know, coming down to Palestine and getting beat up by Palestine when I was in school. And the thing that we always took pride in was no matter what it was, whether we were winning or losing, and we did a lot of losing when I was in school here, um, we would talk to other teams after the games and they would say, man, you guys don't give up and you fight until the last whistle. And we got to respect you for that. Um, so that's what we preach to our kids now is, hey, 
you're having more success than I ever had when I was in school. But keep that same mentality of, you know, hey, we're going to defend the honor of Sebring. What's crazy is you, you talked about the, the losing that, that happened over the last two decades, three decades uh, at, at Sebring. What is it like for you? And I apologize if I already asked this question in, in the first episode, but for you now, especially given where you're at, what is it like for you to watch that completely flip on its side? And pe- you look at team, I've talked to teams and fans and coaches that say, we don't want to schedule Sebring because That's right. mentally – the, the parents are in a different place than the kids. You know, we walked out of a game last year, and I'm not going to throw the school under the bus, but they said, you know, that their athletic director had said to them, if you don't beat Sebring, you might as well not catch the bus back home. And they told them, man, that's not the same Sebring team anymore. Those guys are going to come out, and they're going to punch you in the mouth, and they're going to fight until that final whistle blows. Um, so that's something we take a lot of pride in. For me personally, uh, you know, and, and especially with my coaching staff, I mentioned to you, all my guys are guys that played here, guys that went here and graduated from here. And so for us to all kind of get a chance to see it finally start to come together, you know, it, it's just it's a really special time to be part of the Seaburn football family. Yeah, and that's got to be really fulfilling for you. And, and to march into week seven this year in the playoffs, I mean, you at the helm, I, I mean, you've, you've got to be overjoyed to, to, to be the guy. I mean, no matter the circumstance, it's, it's still going to be, you're going to be the guy that led the Trojans to the playoffs. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know we're going to be sitting around as a team together waiting to find out who it is that we got to draw. It feels like it's got a March Madness feel. It does. Like, yep. hey, who did we get in the draw for the tournament? And where are we going to play? And, you know, what are we going to see? So there's a lot of excitement to it this year. I think it's a good thing overall because – you know, I, we're not the only school out there that, that doesn't get an opportunity like this all the time. And so the more kids that we can get to have this kind of an opportunity, the better I think it is overall. Whether it's, it's, a, yeah. whether it's all about money or whether it's all about whatever, Cares. the kids are getting an opportunity. And so that's all I care about is let's do what's right for our kids. You have battled through your fair share of adversity. Your team embodies you, and, and they'll continue to battle through adversity. One young man who really – has battled through some adversity is the the man we're highlighting this year for our play, or this week rather for our player profile Frankie Lazoya talk to me about Frankie and what he means to this team and and what he's been through yes Frankie's a kid that's a senior um I've had the the joy the 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 great fortune to have Frankie uh over the years whether it was at the little Trojans level or the junior high level and now again at the varsity level and Frankie's just one of those kids that you love to have as a coach. He's a tough-nosed kid. Um, he'll do anything for the team. He's willing to take on any role. Um, Frankie's a kid that when I came in as the head coach in this stint, um, he was playing tight end and running back. And I went to him and I said, Frankie, you're a big, strong kid. I don't have a lot of those right now. I really need you to make the switch to offensive line. I know it's not as glamorous as playing running back and tight end, He stopped me. He said, Coach, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it for the team. And I told him, I said, you know, that's what leadership's all about. And Frankie is, um, he's one of our team captains this year. He is the only kid out of our team captains this year. And it's not a knock on any of the other ones. It's just a testament to the kind of character that he has, that every single kid on our team voted as one of their three captain choices. And it's incredible. The story that that young man has, he's a man of very few words, but he knows what he wants and he goes and gets it. I, I mean, honestly, I asked him, uh, you know, what you're looking to do when you, you graduate? And he said, I want to weld. You know, I go to the career yep. center, I want to weld. And then he said some kind of, I don't even know what the terminology was. I said, I have no idea what that is. Can you tell me? All but then he, specialization. Yeah, he, know, I mean, it runs in the family. He loves it. Um, and that's the thing is chasing your passion at this point. When you think of a word that describes Frankie, what is that word? You know, passion's got to be a great word, and I hate to just steal your word, but, um, you know, I, there's a ton of words that could fit Frankie. Passion's one of them. Tenacious is another one. Um, and, and I just think he's one of those kids, he's such a tough-nosed kid and just willing to do the little things that are going to make the biggest difference for him. And, you know, unfortunately with Frankie, he lost his father a couple years ago. Uh, you know, we were all heartbroken for him. And, you know, that's one of the things that's really kind of unique about sports is 
you get kids from all different kinds of backgrounds and kids from all different kinds of stories and you start to find out about them and you really just you bring them into this family that we call our athletic teams and it's just a different kind of feel so I, I know Frankie's going to be a successful kid because I can see it in him um, you know no matter what he ends up doing and I know he's studying to be a welder right now he's doing some of that right now I'm excited that he's you know picked a career path and that he realized early on that, you know, even though college might not be for him, there's things that you can do out there that can make you a great living. And I really look forward to seeing the man that Frank Lizzoe turns out as more than I look forward to even seeing what kind of a football player he turns out to be this year. Oh, man, is that fantastic. Coach, uh, a couple more questions before we let you go here on the Bear Brothers Coaches yep. Corner with Matt Seidel. Uh, I mean, Let's let's close our eyes a little bit, and as you walk out of that locker room tomorrow night, what are some of the thoughts that's going to be rolling through your mind? Well, my first thought's going to be, did we only have 10 kids at the lo- in the locker room at the time? Because we, we got those weird COVID rules for it this year. Um, but I think my second thought is going to be, man, we're here. We finally made it. Um, you know, and, and for me, as a guy that played and now gets a chance to coach, you know, I, I think most of the coaches that you talk to would tell you that they coach because they won't let them play anymore. Yeah. You know, uh, I get a text message from my family every game day that says uh, my my coaches and I laugh about this because they get the same ones and they respond the same way. They say, hey, good luck tonight. And we all respond the same way. We keep trying, but they won't let us put the pads on anymore. <laughs> you know, that, that's why we do it. I miss my favorite sound in the world is hearing the click clack of the cleats walking across the street over here on 13th Street to the stadium. Uh, you know, that's the stuff that I get those butterflies down in the stomach and, you know, just get hyped up and ready to go for the game. And I, I think our kids are there too, finally. You know, they're just, they're at the point now where it's like, all right, let's do this. And, you know, we're not, we're not the Seabird that's going to be the punching bag anymore. We're going to go out and we're going to take some, pun- we're going to throw some punches this year. Love it. Uh, the, the first episode, we we ended it with your who was your role model, and obviously you had great answers about your father, and, and I, I, I it just it stayed with me. So, in question two, yeah. as we always do, it's a little bit more personal. It's a little bit throw the whistle away. What sure. were your dreams and ambitions uh, in growing up? What did you want to be when you were a little kid, and and what dreams do you still have now? So one of my one of my first things that I wanted to be when I was a little kid was. I looked up to, we've got a fantastic volunteer fire department here in town. And there were guys that were friends of my dad's guys that lived in my neighborhood, that they were firefighters. And, you know, when that, when that tones dropped, they would just drop whatever they were doing, whether it was eating dinner or playing with their kids or whatever it was. And they'd rush down to the station, and you know, hop on that fire truck and head, you know, to help somebody out that needed something. Sure. And so my first memory is wanting to be a firefighter. Um, cause you know, it just seemed really cool at the time. You got to wear a uniform and you know, those guys were in there like holding the hose and spraying water all over the place. It just looked like a cool job. Every um, kid's dream, right? Bit, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and our guys here in town are fantastic about, you know, when, when there's little kids that are interested, they bring them down to the station. They put them up on the truck. They, you know, let them sound the siren a little bit, you know, just yeah. hang out with them and, and talk to them a little bit. And, We've been fortunate enough as a football program that we've had a couple kids even last year. I had two kids that passed their fire service exam and they're already licensed as firefighters in the state of Ohio that played for us last year. So we get excited about that kind of stuff. And, you know, any of those rules with our first responders or our military, I've got one that went to the military last year and we couldn't be more proud of those guys. Um, A little bit later life for me, you know, I, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. I think I, started watching some of those crime dramas and things. And so when I was at Mount Union, I was actually a political science pre-law major and had a concentration in constitutional law. I thought I was going to go be a lobbyist and change the world in Washington, D.C. So I've had a little bit of a career change, obviously. Decided I wasn't going to go on to law school. Well, I didn't see that. That came out of left field. I mean, that was incredible. You learn something new every day. Coach, uh, thank you again so much for your time. Looking forward to next week. Uh, any last words before you clash the pads with the uh, the Blue Devils? You know, DJ, I just want to say thanks again for having us. Thanks for everything you're doing for our kids. Um, you know, the coverage that you're providing to the area, it's just unbelievable. 
um, you know, and, and what a year to have a platform like YSN to be a partner with. Um, I know I was talking to some people tonight down at our local bar and they were talking about, man, can we stream the game bar for people to come down and hang out and watch? And I was like, I don't know what the rules are on that, but I love the thought, you know, Hey, there's a bunch of what people downtown <laughs> out with the flat screen. So, what the um, hell? Why not? Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and you're, you hit on it. You hit on it. It's the it's the biggest thing uh, for us. We love being able to give back to these schools. Twenty five percent of the revenue will be directed right back to the home team. And tomorrow, that is you, my friend. And and we hope that Sebring Trojan Nation turns out full steam. And also, you know, McDonald. I'm sure they're going to have a few purchases as well. So good luck Absolutely. tomorrow, Coach. We're looking forward to uh, to the game. Obviously, right here on YSNLive.com/slash Sebring.